Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon XF400 and 405 video training series. In this video, it's all about connectivity. Now I've talked about this wireless controller in another video in the series. In this video, what I wanna do is talk to you about controlling the camera both on location and in the studio in different ways. For instance, using a smartphone or a tablet, a laptop computer, or the RC V100. So let's get started. So let's start with a smartphone or a tablet. And what we need to do is we need to go into our menu system. We're gonna go into system setup in the first menu in the camera. And we're going to choose network settings. Now, I have to say this because I have been working with Canon cameras for a long time, including other XF series cameras. This has finally gotten easy. So I am very excited to say that we don't have to go through many, many, many steps to get to the place where we can connect to our camera system. We have to only go through a few short steps. So the first thing that we need to do when we have the camera set up, and this has been reset, so it's in its default settings, is we have to go to activate. And then we're gonna choose browser remote. And as soon as we do that, we're basically turning on what we call an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. So it is now broadcasting a ad hoc Wi-Fi network to a device that we can connect to. Now this will work with a smartphone, it will work with a tablet, it will in fact also work with a laptop computer if you wanted to. But most of the times when we're in the field and we wanna control the camera system remotely, we are gonna use a device like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back out of there and then I'm going to turn on my smartphone here. So let me just go ahead and do that. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna go into my Wi-Fi settings. And so I'm gonna go into Wi-Fi and you will see now that I've actually activated that browser remote that the XF400 is showing up here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that network. I'm going to enter the password and by default, it couldn't be easier to remember. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can change that if you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and join that Wi-Fi network. You do not need to have Wi-Fi connectivity. It is an ad hoc network, as I said before. Now you can see that we have connected to that ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And now I'm gonna to go to my web browser and type in the default IP address to connect to the camera itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type that in. It is 192.168. Dot zero dot eight zero. So there's the IP address and I'm gonna say go. And now what it's going to do is it's going to connect to this ad hoc network. And you can see here that I have camera control for my XF400 in this case, or the XF405. And the first button I'm gonna press here is live view. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to see a camera feed and then I can start to go in here and I can actually start to change parameters and settings and control the camera system. We've set up what could be a typical situation where you can't get to the camera system because it's too far away. So what I've done is I've activated the browser remote on the camera system and I'm gonna go in now to my smartphone and I'm gonna type in that IP address and connect to the camera. I'm gonna hit live view on there and now I have a live feed of the camera. And now I can actually control that camera very easily. While this is playing out, I'm gonna switch over to this other mode here. So we can switch over to this little icon. And this is a more restricted mode, but it's actually really nice to use in a situation like this. So I'll go live view and we can see that feed and we can go in and let's just say we wanted a tighter shot there. Then we can go in for that tighter shot. And we're doing this all in real time while we are recording to the camera system. And there's even the ability in here to see, in this case, we're using that face detection. So it's locked on. And then I also have confidence in terms of our talent being in focus. So nice really easy way to use the camera system and that's using the browser remote in a real world situation. So this is ideal if the camera is mounted remotely 
and it gives you a lot of control in terms of pretty much anything that you'd wanna change with the camera system if, again, you cannot get to the camera itself. So now we're gonna talk about wired connectivity to the 400 and the 405, and why would you wanna do that as opposed to what I showed you earlier on in the video? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Let's say, for instance, you're in a city or at a trade show or convention where there's so much wireless communication and so many devices that you can't get a reliable connection to your device. Additionally, sometimes you're not allowed to use a Wi-Fi connection to your device because they want to make sure that it's secured. And also, you may not want people to have access to your camera system, even though your password may be great. If we have a wired connection, then we know it's a direct connection from one device to another. So it's a little bit different when we set this up than just doing the ad hoc Wi-Fi network. It does take a few more steps and you will want to refer to the user manual for uh, basically a reference when you're doing this. But at least what I wanna do is show you the basic connectivity, things that you need to know about so that you can do this successfully uh, on your projects. So under network settings, before we were under activate and we had browser remote selected. We do wanna make sure that that's off before we go ahead and set up this secure connection, which we do have that off right now. And we go into connection settings and we can create multiple connections with the camera system. And what we've done here is we've taken the first one and we have set that up and we're gonna go in here and I'm just gonna take you through some of the things that we've done already. So I'm gonna go into edit, which is what you would do. And we would choose ethernet. And then we are going and creating a manual ethernet connection to the camera system. Now there's two very important things that you need to do. You need to set an IP address and you also need to set up a subnet mask. Unlike the Wi-Fi network that we set up before where our IP address could match, we do need to make sure that the IP address for whatever our device is and the camera system are different. So in this case right here, we have our IP address set to 192.168.0.80. And in my network settings here on the computer system, you'll see that the IP address is set to 192.168.0.81. So those are different because they are two different devices. Subnet mask is set to 255.255.255.0, and we are matching that on our other device. So those two can be exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say okay, okay, and okay. And this is what you would do when you're setting this up, but of course you would put those numbers in there. And then we go back into network settings into activate we are going to now choose browser remote, just like we did when we were setting up that ad hoc network. And I have these settings in here. We have now seen that there is a connection. I can actually see that that has been connected. Just one other tip, on this particular system, I am using a Thunderbolt 3 uh, gigabit ethernet adapter and I needed to download and install drivers to make sure that this worked properly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close out my network settings on this computer. I am going to launch a web browser here and I am going to type in the IP address that I set here when I created that ethernet connection. So again, that is 192.168.0.80. I have that in there. And when I do that, I connect to the camera system. And then I'm gonna go down here and just like I did when I was using the smartphone, I'll click on live view and now I'm getting a live view of my camera system. And I can go in here and I have my white balance tab here and all my white balance settings. These are my exposure settings to operate the camera. And then over here, we have our focus zoom settings. So that is in a nutshell, how you set up a secured wired connection to your XF400 and 405. So the last thing I wanna to talk to you about today is the RCV100 and using it with the 400 and 405. And this is ideal for live broadcast and studio-based environments. 
and connecting it to this camera and using it could not be easier. So I have the connector set up here on the RCV100, so that's connected there. And then we have to connect this on the other end to the remote terminal on the 400 or the 405. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in. Now, once that's plugged in on both ends, we will start to see the camera power flash here on the RCV100. And what we need to do is we need to tell this camera to actually communicate with it. So that's very easy to do. We go into our menu system and under system setup, under the second page, there is an option called remote terminal. And under remote terminal, we're gonna choose RCV100. We're gonna back out of that. And the last step in order to connect these two things together is we have to press this button down here called active. So if I go ahead and hold that down and it becomes a solid color, I am now connected and I can control this camera system. So for instance, right now we have zero dB gain. We have an up and down arrow for gain. So we're gonna go ahead and press that and you will see that the camera starts to gain up. I also have the option down here on the bottom right to affect the camera's iris. So I can smoothly control that. And so we have also things like our shutter. We can change our ND on the camera system with this. We can of course access the full menu system on the camera. So again, this is a great tool in live broadcast and studio environments. So hopefully this video has given you a good overview of connectivity options with the 400 and the 405. Thanks for watching.